Two longtime Winnipeg Symphony Orchestra principals, Yuri Hooker and Meredith Johnson, are part of the backbone of the orchestra. Cello and double bass are foundational elements in the symphony's sound, though it isn't all too often we get to hear them without their colleagues, and certainly rarer still to hear them without any of their smaller string siblings. A new composition by German-born Canadian composer Michael Oesterly changes that. Parlor Games was first heard a couple of weekends ago at the Cornish Library, and the duo will reprise the work in the second concert in the 2023 Winnipeg New Music Festival. To hear more, Yuri and Meredith have joined me in the studio. Welcome to Classic 107. We're going to begin with a little bit of music. <laughs> Live in the Classic 107 studio, we just heard Yuri Hooker and Meredith Johnson performing the music of Michael Oesterly. Um, guys, that was that was really special. How how cool was that? <laughs> Thanks. Uh, I I gotta say, um, Michael Oesterly, I'm a, I'm a big fan. And and before we get to this work, I know it's a um, a, a multi movement work. There's, there's there's various numbers. I think twelve of them in total. And we're gonna get to that in just a bit. But but first, it's not like I've never heard just cello and and double bass. But you're certainly making a, a compelling case to hear more of just the two instruments together. Is this pairing as unique as I'm I'm making it out to be, Meredith? It's it's relative. It's not unique, but it's rare. And um, it's it's funny you mentioned the, the the pairing because initially it was a project that um, I, I was part several years ago. I was a part of a commission where there was a group of double bass players, and we got together and pooled our resources to get a new piece written uh, for double bass and piano. And I thought, oh, what a great idea! I'm going to try to do that as well. And uh, Yuri, being a dear friend and close colleague, he's one of the first people I mentioned it to, and he had the inspired idea to say, well, how would you feel about Getting, I, I knew I wanted Michael to write the piece. That was right from the get-go. I knew that's who I wanted to to, to approach. And Yuri, it was Yuri's idea to say, "Well, what, what? How do you feel about having him write a cello bass duo?" Purely for <laughs> selfish reasons. Yeah. yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna say, Yuri, what, what, what made you say that to, to Meredith when he approached you with this idea? Uh, 
Well, I mean, Michael, of course, has been um, a, a dear friend uh, for a long time, um, and one of, really one of my favorite composers ever. Um, and uh, so, you know, I just kind of wanted to um, be a part of something that Michael <laughs> was going to do. And, and, and any excuse to hang out more with Meredith was always going to be fun. Yeah, it's, it's a good one, especially when you get to make music together. Yeah. Um, you mentioned Michael Osterley. He's been a, a favorite in town. I know the Manitoba Chamber Orchestra has premiered a number of his, wor of his works. The Winnipeg New Music Festival has featured his compositions before. How would you characterize Michael's writing, Yuri? Um, fresh. Um, it's it's always exciting, always bracing, always. It, to me, there's a there's a, a familiarity with it bec because of the the musical materials he uses. But he, it's used in such a new way and such a a, a, a unique way. Um, right from the very first time I, he I heard a piece of his, which was one of my first years here in Winnipeg, we played a piece uh, by Michael called Hockney People for. Mm. For symphony and uh, I was just blown away. I was just stunned by the the imagination and the, the conception of rhythm, particularly uh, that Michael has. Yeah, there's that wonderful driving force, and I mean, he just he is such a unique writer, um, someone who really blends old and new. And it seems like everything comes together in his music. Sometimes it sounds almost like um, minimalism of, of the '60s. Sometimes it sounds like it could be steeped in Bach. I mean, he is just running the gamut in terms of his his musical writing. Um, so, Meredith, you have this idea. You're, you're part of this initiative, and you approach Yuri. He's game. How do you go about connecting with Michael Oesterly? And, and tell us about the genesis of, of this particular work, Parlor Games. Well, we I know I knew Michael a, a little bit as well, and you know the after Yuri and I spoke, I I got in touch with Michael, and and he. Um, I mentioned sort of both ideas, and he really latched on to the cello bass idea. Mm. He seemed to really, it seemed to really resonate with him. And, and from there, it was pretty straightforward, really. It was just, um, I, I sort of, I have such confidence in him. I just sort of, you know, write what you want to write. We just want to play it. And then not surprisingly, we spoke a few weeks later, and <laughs> Michael had basically become an expert <laughs> on the cello bass repertoire. He was talking about pieces I'd never heard of and, and all of this music that he, oh, this is fantastic, and this is fantastic, and I'm getting all these great ideas. And, uh, you know, of course, COVID got, this was a long time coming because COVID sort of wrecked everything. But uh, but then, you know, as in the last year, 18 months, pieces just start flowing in and he's like well I've written this and I've written this and I've written this and and then he sort of said this is what I'm envisioning I'm envisioning sort of you know he describes parlor games it's it's a reference to you know things you would do in in a living room you know so they're like card games there's a lot of word play in the music there's a lot of it's like Yuri was talking about with the rhythm it's it's extraordinarily creative the way even some of the simplest sounding music, there's there's so much there. It's this wonderful onion, and that's been a big thrill for us, is that every time we play the music, one of us usually starts sort of chuckling because we just learned something else, or we saw something else, or you yeah. hear something else that you didn't hear before. It's 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 such rich music. It yeah, really the, mar is. the mark of a great composition, and one of those that you're going to keep coming back to and continue to play. Um, so in total, you mentioned he, he just kept adding uh, to this, this, this series, Parlor Games, um, obviously incorporating that element of play. How many works are there in, in total? Twelve? Twelve. And so are they meant to be standalone compositions? Are they meant to be played one into the other? How, how does that how does that structure work? He actually writes in, he has some very brief program notes. He, he references kind of like a box of chocolates. It's mm. really, it's it's dealer's choice, yeah, yeah. basically. And and so the pieces are not necessarily, for the premiere, we really felt strongly about we're going to play all 12. And, and we did. Yeah, front to back. Three times, <laughs> and, and which was <laughs> really a great, it was a great afternoon. But I think the idea is that they're very user friendly. Yeah. Um, you can play two, two or three. I think he says ideally maybe at least three or four. But and there's the the biggest piece of the twelve by far is the last one. It's called Run. It's about four minutes long. We will be playing that one uh, in a couple of weeks at the New Music Festival. That's really the only one that that's meant to be standalone. Other than that, he you know it's he, like I said, he's it's like a box of chocolates. He's like pick what you like and play that. Really cool. Um, you mentioned uh, the performance of, of All 12 uh, back on, on January 7th at the Cornish Library. Um, that was a, an afternoon show, and uh, there were two shows, and, and you mentioned there happened to be three uh, real well attended. Uh, Yuri, what, what was the reaction like um, from, from those in the audience? 
uh, it was really well received. Um, and I was really happy there were people of all ages there, lots of kids there, some of our students were there, of course, but and just lots of people from the community who, many people who I didn't recognize, and um, they, just, they just all came out um, to hear this fantastic music. You know, it, it, I mean, obviously, as you mentioned, Michael's, Michael's well-known mm. in this community um, and well-loved in, in this community. And, of course, we were playing in a, a well-known and well-loved um, space, although the atrium where we yeah, were the playing new wing. Is, is brand new. Yeah, so it's I think gorgeous. people were also excited to, to that. And it was just a perfect afternoon. I mean, you mentioned where, where you've played this, at the Cornish Library, um, in the, the New Wing, beautiful venue for those who haven't explored it. For those who missed the show, as, as I did, it was Ukrainian Christmas, um, it's also going to be performed as part of the second concert in the Winnipeg New Music Festival that's coming up on, on Sunday, uh, January 29th, at the uh, Royal uh, Aviation Museum of, of Western Canada. Do you, do you have to perform this music in really cool venues, <laughs> or can you play this in a in a parlor in a living room or somewhere more classically? Uh, I mean, that, yeah, I, mean, I think I think that was our original idea um, yeah. was to play it, you know, in a house concert, and we may be playing it in a house concert uh, in a, in a num- in a month or so or two. Um, and, and definitely, it can be played anywhere like that. But what drew, drew me to the Cornish, of course, was that it, you know, the, the Cornish is the living room of the community, right? So it, it seemed like just the perfect place. And then what about performing in the um, the brand new Royal Aviation Museum? You, you must be looking forward to that. Very much so. Yeah. I, I'm, as, as, we're, as, you're, as we're talking about this, I'm, thinking, I'm going to have to be careful not to, you know, look around at the planes <laughs> the whole time. I think it's going to be, it's going to be a, a really interesting evening and, um, I, yeah, I've just I've always I've only been able to drive by the building thus mm-hmm. far, you know, picking people up mm-hmm. and dropping them off you at and the I airport. Both. Yeah, <laughs> so really looking forward to getting into the space. And um, but it is it is really wonderful about this since it's as long as you've got room enough for a cello and a bass, you can play them play these pieces anywhere. And uh, so I'm we're very we're very excited and very hopeful for the for the future of the of the music. It's it's terrific stuff. Yeah, it is portable, it is accessible, and it is um, very entertaining. Those first two pieces, um, which which numbers were those? Just out of curiosity. Well, double is double. the first one, okay. yeah. and triplicate I think is is he's got it ordered as second to last. Okay, um, very fun. But again, it's sort of like you say, a box of chocolates. It's dealer's choice. You can play them however you like, as long right. as the last one is last. Mm-hmm. You're going to queue up uh, one more for us. Uh, though I, I should say, uh, this show coming up on Sunday, uh, January 29th, the second concert in the Winnipeg New Music Festival is going to be a great one. Also, music of Brian Eno and Caroline Shaw and Kenan Azme and uh, Kalibi Aho, the distinguished guest composer, amongst many others. Um, it's going to be a good one. Uh, very excited that you're both here sort of previewing the show in a way. We're going to hear one more number uh, from Parlor Games. Uh, what, are, what are we going to hear? Uh, this movement is called Tool, and it's uh, rhythmically, I think, uh, it really grooves. So I think, and it's very different from the, uh, the, the, the first two we played. It's an 11-8 time. It's Ooh. just fantastic. Very fun. All right, so here in the Classic 107 studio are uh, Meredith Johnson on the double bass, Yuri Hooger on the cello, performing music of Michael Esterly. Thank you. 
Grooving with Yuri Hooker and Meredith Johnson live in the Classic 107 studio. We just heard music of Michael Osterley. Absolutely fantastic, guys. Thanks for coming in this morning.